Hi, I'm Danielle or Danny Girl Art and I'm happy to have you returning to watch another video or maybe this is your first time. When you're done with today's tangle, I invite you to go to my Facebook page and to post your tile or if you post your tile somewhere else on social media to tag me at Danny Girl Art. And we're going to be using some a new tangle that I'm exploring and some of my old favorite ones. And today you're going to need a circle zandala or you can pre-cut a circle out as well. You'll need a micron. I'm using a black PN, but feel free to use any color or colors you want or an 01 or a different size. I have a pencil, a tortillon, and I'm using a Marcus Apparandus, which you can print out from Zentangle.com, or you can just freehand this. So I'm going to start with my Marcus Apparandus and my Zendala by placing my Zendala over the circle. And with a pencil, I'm going to make a mark at the one, the, actually I'll be making a mark at all of these whole circles to make it easier for you. A one, I'll mark one here, here, here. Going all the way around at the whole circles. From here, I'm going to very lightly, I'll press a little darker for you, connect my lines. So sometimes I just use the straight edge of the paper, or if you have a ruler by you, you can use a ruler as well. So whichever is easier for you, but the actual printer paper works quite well if you don't have a ruler at hand. And if they don't match up perfectly in the center, don't stress over it, just do your best. And again, press much later than what I'm doing. So I'm going to start, and you can do this directly in pen to begin with, if you would like. I'm going to start with my Micron PN, and I'm going to make a very thin border going around the outside of my circle. And once I start to feel like my hand is no longer comfortable, I will stop and I will turn my tile. And I not only just move where I'm holding my pen, I'm moving my wrist as well to try to keep the line in one motion as, as much as I can, but again, just do your best and it doesn't have to be perfect. So there's my outside um, border. And the first tangle is a new tangle I've been exploring, Zagoli, and you may have seen it posted on social media. And the creator is Deb Bauer and she is from Canada. And I'm really having a lot of fun exploring this. So I hope you enjoy it as well. So from here, I'm going to Aura the line that I just created. After I aura that line, I'm going to go in and add a thicker line. And if you find it easier to go in and to add some guidelines, please do that. So I'm going to make it about this thickness. So if I wanted to go around and come down a little bit on each one of my lines that I have here, that would give me a little bit of a helpful guide. So I'm going to go in and if you had something you wanted to trace as well, you could do that. I know though that even though I'm freehanding this and it's not going to be perfect, that it's okay because at the end, this is all going to blend together 
and everything always works out in the end. So my circle is not by any means perfect, but I'm really okay with that. So go in and add your smaller inner circle. And once you have that, you're going to go in and you are going to aura all along the outside of the circle you just drew. So the next step is going to be to add this up and down line going all around this section that we've just created. So you can start anywhere. I'll start at this line here. And I'm going to start by making these lines that are going to create triangles. And I'm going to go all the way around. And when I get close to the end, I'm going to want to eyeball it so that it closes up. So maybe I'll have to just kind of work on the space a little bit as I get closer to the end, making something smaller or larger in a area. So this already is looking so beautiful. Now I'm going to go into each one of these triangles and I'm going to aura. So I'll do it in both directions in every single one. So I completed all my inner triangles. The next step for this tangle, I'm going to go into each inner triangle and from corner to corner, I am going to add a curve. I wind up with this inner triangle that I will go ahead and I will fill in. And this really is such a great time to get that Zen flow going and as you're filling in, this is a lot of inking, good meditation time, really a good time to take a few deep breaths and relax. So I'm gonna do that in every single one of these triangles. So I'm coming in on my last two triangles. I hope you're doing well with yours. Remember to enjoy the process. And if something is calling and to your child that you want to do different, I encourage you to do that as well. So the next tangle that we're going to do is one of my favorites and it's called Bouffants. Bouffants is by Joanna Quincy. And I had the pleasure of finding Joanna online at the beginning of quarantine. And she is a lovely CZT to take classes with. So um, I encourage you to look her up and take a look at her work. And she is very kind and caring and a great teacher. So let's start and we're gonna use these pencil marks as our guide. So I'm going to, on this line, meeting up against my ink that is already there, I'm going to add a pretty decent size orb. And eventually, every one of these will have a orb to start our tangle bouffants. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on my orb and I'm going to redefine it coming up and almost making like a flux shape coming down. And then from the one I just created, I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to curve around and redefine again that orb. And I will continue to do that going around until I hit my zig my ziggoli. And you'll wind up with a little space at the bottom. And that little space is going to get inked in. 
So now I'm going to go to my next pencil line, add an orb, redefine, coming out pretty far, and I'll continue my petals around. And I am tangling pretty large, and we'll get to a point where we need to halibut. So I'll draw behind the bouffant that is already there, touching down on that orid line. And when I complete it, I'm going to go in and ink in these little negative spaces. And negative spaces, the background area. So I'm going to continue on each one of these lines, creating my bouffant. So I'm up to my last bouffant and I have my orb here. And now this is going to wind up holobying behind the bouffant to the right of it and to the left to close off this area. And again, I'm gonna fill in those little negative spaces. So you could leave bouffants just like this if you'd like. But I have to agree with Joanna. She does a lot of hatching in her work and I really think it brings a little extra element of delight to the work. And you can use the Micron PN to do this, or I didn't say this earlier, but if you have an O1, you might wanna to switch to that. It, might, it gives it a little bit more of a delicate look. And again, this is completely optional. And I realize I didn't fill this one in, so let me just do that first. Okay, so I love flick marks hatching. So I'm going to start from the point and I'm going to just bring them out very delicate like this. So figure out, maybe test some out on the back of your paper first and see what you're more comfortable with, flicking away or flicking towards you. Everyone's different and I have to be honest, I'm always changing how I feel about this. But I love this. It brings me back to memories of being in school so a little bit about me, I've been teaching art for 22 years and I started really, I've always enjoyed art since I was a little, little girl, but in high school I had some really great teachers that I had great influence from and really wanted and created um, a desire for me to become an art teacher. and. In high school, we had a really great high school program, art program, great teachers, great course offerings, a lot of opportunities for us. And one class I took was advertising. And we did a lot of stippling, which is little dots in that class. And we also did a lot of hatching and cross hatching. And cross hatching is when you have lines going in one direction and then the other. So this, this really is very, brings back a lot of memories for me doing hatching technique that's been around for quite some time. I also did a lot of hatching when I took lithography in college, which is a type of printmaking. Really, really good when you're trying to add a dark element to an area with with a solid color that you're using. So I'm going to continue this going all the way around. So that's my bouffant. So I have this last center left and I'm only going to use one more tangle. So I'm going to suggest either Diva Dance or Diva Dance Rock and Roll. And this is a headquarters tangle. I really like the circular um, one going around, maybe follow the pattern that is already here. Um, but the straight one's really nice too. I'm, I'm undecided. So I'm going to go with, I wish you guys could help me out right now. <laughs> I'm going to go with Diva Dance. 
I'm going to do the regular one. I, I something's telling me to do this one, and I and I hope that some of you try this one out, and you post it on my Facebook page. Um, but I'm going to try this. Maybe just break up the circular pattern of it. So I'm going to move back to my PN, and I'm going to start with a wavy line going down the center. I'm going to exaggerate a little bit more than I usually do. And from here, I'm going to go in and add a few bump outs. And then I'm going to fill these bump outs in. Maybe I'll do one here. You can do as many or as few as you would like. And then I'm going to go in and I am going to aura that section. And I want to continue. I could on this line add more bump outs or if I wanted to do a second aura, I could do a second aura. And then go in and start to add some more. I like to kind of stagger them so that they're not all right in the same, it lines up together, but it's completely up to you how you would like to do it. And it's going to depend on how your weave is as well. So I try not to overthink it. Just go with the flow, go in and add my aura. And I'm going to continue this to the side. So there are my tangles. I'm happy with my decision. I really like that Diva Dance, but I am curious to see how the Diva Dance Rock and Roll comes out as well. So now we're the fun part. We're gonna do some shading. I always encourage my students to take a before and after photo. So if you're able to, take a photo of your tile right now and then take one when you're done shading so that you can see the difference. And for this particular tile, I'm going to start in the center and work my way out. And be careful that you are not running your hands across your pencil because you don't want to smudge everything. So I'm going to shade my Diva Dance first. And how I'm going to do this is with the cushions shading. So I'm going all around my bouffant. And I'm just going to skip over any really dark areas because I find that the pencil makes the really dark inked in areas look a bit shiny. So I'm going to go around all my bouffant and I like, I like dramatic shading. So I am going in with a heavy pencil and I don't worry about the edges being super neat. In fact, as I am coming out towards the center of my tile, I take a little pressure off of my hands and I get a little bit lighter with my pencil. So this is going to help have a nicer blend when we move on to our tortillon. So I'm just moving all the way around, keeping my hand out of the pencil that's there. Again, getting a little bit lighter as I come out. meeting up where I started. And I'm going to pick up my tortillon and in some delicate circular motions, I'm going to blend that towards the center. I still want the white of the tile to be present in the center. So don't bring it out all the way. But if you feel like you did not put enough pencil down, then you can always go back in. If you feel like you're scrubbing your paper and the pencil's not moving around and not much is happening, then you most likely did not put enough pencil down. And that's a really easy fix. Just pick your pencil back up and add some more. So I'm pretty happy with that. And I already see that that's receding and going back and that my blue font now is coming up. I might just take my pencil and 
touch up around the edges if I missed any little spots. I really could spend forever shading. I just love the transformation. So that's our first area sheeted. Next, we're going to shade bouffants. So with bouffants, where the areas are overlapped, the back pieces, I'm going to add some graphite. And if anything is overlapped, hollabawing, like that section right there. And I'll go in and just tease this out a little bit. Again, I wanna make sure I'm leaving white in each petal so I have a contrast. And just with my dirty tortillon, I'm not going to even add any pencil on the one that's on top. I'm going to go in and just add a little darkness. So again, I'm doing these back pieces along with anything that is overlapped. And I can even add a little curve on the orb part of this. And we're still seeing some of my guidelines because I pressed really hard so that you could see, but yours should just be fading into the back. So I'm going to do that with each of my bouffants. So I've completed my bouffants. And if you wanted to exaggerate and add any little darker areas where they're all meeting, I invite you to go back in with your pencil and do that. Again, I really like to be brave and bold and um, add a lot of darkness into my areas. And that's not for everybody and that's okay. So do what you're comfortable and you will build up to more dramatic shading as you become comfortable. So I'm going to go into my border and I suggest maybe you watch first. And if you have a different way that you prefer to shade, then please, by all means, do that. I'm going to start in this inner circle, going all the way around, adding some graphite. And I'm not doing it too far out. I'm doing a really thin line because I have quite a few things I want to do in here. And make sure you have a good point on your pencil when you're doing this. And then I'm going to go around the other side of the border and I'm going to do the same. And I will be adding in one direction on the triangles some additional graphite. So before I even torte on this, because I want you to see where I'm putting all this in, I'm going to look at my Zendala and the triangles that are facing down I am going to add some graphite along those borders, those lines, those edges. So I'll do a little section for you and then I'm gonna pick up my tortillon and do some blending so that you can see. So I would wanna go around very softly this outer graphite line that I've added. And again, that's why I'm encouraging you to just watch this first because there's a lot going on in here. You want to really keep this nice and thin. You don't want to gray everything out. You could, it could be a little too much. And then in the inner area, I will torte on that out nice and gently. And then those triangle lines, I will add, uh, take my tortillon and blend that as well. So it's going to start to give the illusion that the other ones are popping up and the ones behind it are receding. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that all along my border. 
So here I have my finished tile and don't forget to take a picture of it completed now. And it's nice to take a photo sometimes also and to then look at it on your camera or phone and see, do I need to go back in and make anything darker, blend anything more, add something and maybe go back in and do that. So I'm going to find a spot to add my chop. I'm gonna add mine right inside one of these orbs. And I'm going to flip this over. And today I'm going to sign it. And today's date is May 5th, 21. And if you haven't done so already, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and like this video. And I would love to see what your creation is. I hope you had a zenful time.